Ten, spy, ten spies and two scouts came out carrying grapes. The ten spies, right, told Moses what they saw with their eyes. No, we can't do it. It's impossible. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. Word, word, word. And now, now, now. That's what they was doing. They was telling, they was doing using their words. Use your words. Use your words. Don't do that all the time. Don't use your words all the time. You want to know why God shut the mouth of the Israelites while they were walking around Jericho? It's because when God let them talk the first time, they talked about the wrong thing. God won't let you have a voice in your situation. But he needs you to call it what it is spiritually. You know, he needs you to speak because if you don't speak, the mountain will not move itself. It will think that you're okay and come will sit next to it. He needs you to speak so that thing can run itself into the sea. He needs you to speak. But you must say the right thing. So he shut their mouths. And if you think about it, what was the first thing that they said when they opened their mouths? Ah! Like they just start praising God. I go to sleep and I shut my mouth. But the first thing I want to come out of my mouth when I wake up is a praise. They were not allowed to discourage each other, right? Because if you're walking around, we don't know when the walls going to come down. We're just walking around this city. What happens if a kid gets happy and throws something out the window at me? Ow! Somebody threw something at me. A bird pooped on me. I start sharing that. And it becomes I'm sick of walking around these, this, this mountain, this Jericho, these people. I'm sick, of walk, I'm sick of walking around my enemy like they are running things. I'm sick. I tips all around you. They're not telling you what I really think about you. I'm sick. He had to, he had to shut their mouths because the, the first time when the, the, when the 12 scouts went in, two scouts, 10 spies came out. And if you read the word, I see it in my head. I see it in my head. If you read the word carefully, you will see that the, the spies, once they came out, started whispering to the people and telling the people, say this, do this. This is what you ought to believe. Say it. If I'm not mistaken, the ten spies ended up dying where they stood. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, don't put um, too much word on that. But it didn't matter what the because it didn't matter what the ten spies came out and said. The point is, you listened to what they were saying. So God shut the people's mouths. We think that the people's mouths were shut because they needed to praise God, and when they got to the the the, 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 the it's gone. No, they could have walked around that mountain one day. At Jericho one day, and it would have been all right. I keep saying mountain because Jericho actually was Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was on the mountain. And Jerusalem was inside of. That's why I had to build those walls. Because they had a problem keeping people out. Because not only were they a city, but they were a city with a mountain, with a high place. Funny story. These people went and camped out and lived in and put walls around something that was not theirs. There was a mountain in there. When Jacob abdicated the mountain and went to Egypt, you abdicate your mountain and go to slavery? You abdicate your promised place and go to slavery. Good job. When Jacob abdicated, he left it empty. When you abdicate, what you are leaving is left wide open for the enemy and all of his cohorts to walk into. They don't want what you got. They just don't want you to have it. When you abdicate. So when Jacob, right, and his 11 sons and their families abdicated and went to go hang out with Joseph in Egypt, what happened? The Jebusites, the Perizzites, the King. I mean, literally, it wasn't, it didn't belong to anybody. So the Pulper Free, it was like Manhattan, a melting pot of people living in that place. It didn't belong to nobody no more. So everybody went in and took charge. And, we, and when everybody go in and take charge, you get a mess of it. Some people will build right, some people will build wrong, some people will build quick. The three little pigs, we talked about them. One had a house of straw, one had a house of brick, one had a house of uh, sand, I think, I don't know. 
come on, we got a Christian version of three little pigs. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. We got a own version. But I love this story, right? Because when Jacob abdicated, you gave up your place. You are king of this place, right? He is a foul role. You are king of this place. You're going to take everything you got and go sit and, uh, and, and he said, bless, Bob said, bless the Pharaoh. How you do that? I can't bless somebody evil. I'm looking at you like, mm, you better get a certificate or something. Get a certificate. Get something. Something. Get something. I don't know. I can't bless you. You gotta go to God first and get saved first. And then when people speak over you, will stick. I am afraid it's gonna be a Balaam and Balak situation. And even when I try to bless you, you're gonna end up walking in curses. I can't do it. I can't bless you. Because what is blessed is blessed. And what is cursed is cursed. I had it twisted. He tried to curse them and he could not. They were still blessed. melted pot, right? Everybody lived there now. Huh? And uh, they had to put walls around it because everybody lives here. So we don't know who belongs and who doesn't. That's probably how they got in to get grapes and walked out. That was the first time they got in. They got in to get grapes and walked out. When they went back, this is the problem. Your enemies know who you are. You don't get it. Rahab told them, they said, um, Rahab said, we know who you are and who your God is. And we also know you're coming to, to take this place out. How did they know that? Nobody had been in Jericho. None of the Israelites had been in Jericho. Forty years ago, they were going to try. They didn't they, they make it. They were going to try. They walked in, got some grapes, came out. I said, I said, oh, that's the reason why they built the walls. The people in Jericho built the walls because they knew they were squatting in a place where they did not belong. And so when they did that, they started Israelites coming to get some grapes and leave. They built walls. You are not coming in and taking us out. It's always going to be hard for you to go back and, and get what you left, what you abdicated. If you try and go back and get it, it will always take more this time to take hold of it. Why? Because the enemy has come in and he has taken hold of it and he has uh, brought seven new ones for you to deal with. You swept it clean, but now you got seven new. And just because it's new doesn't mean it's good. Then he don't want your stuff. He knows that God has you set up to go to that place so that you can fight better from it. The enemy does not want your stuff. He wants stuff. No, there's nothing that he wants more than you not having it. He does not want your stuff. I said, nobody was jealous, jealous of me because nobody, they didn't want what I had. I mean, just me, I had 33 times my ceiling was damaged. 13 times my ceiling was broken completely that I had to clean up. My artwork was undone in everything. It was just, I was done in. I said, she's not jealous. She doesn't want my artwork. She's not jealous of where I live. She lives upstairs. The house is the, the apartments are identical. She's not jealous. She wants me not to have it. You have to still walk around and smile on your face because the enemy wants you not to have it. Shut your mouth when God tell you, shut your mouth. But when you give God praise, open your mouth. When David encouraged himself, he did not do it silently. That's how Michael's urn came to the window and started talking about him. And then we find out that she is, she became barren. She can handle kids. Because she ran her mouth. She wasn't the only wife. She was the first wife. Her son, whoever he was going to be, should have been the heir to the throne. Didn't happen that way.
Because when she opened her mouth, she said the wrong thing. When those, when those 10 spies opened up their mouth, they said the wrong thing. And then the people started spreading it. It's always easier to spread bad news than it is to spread good news. That's why the gospel has such a hard time getting through. Right now, the mouths and the minds and the minds and the mouths of people. Right? Because when you're spreading good news, good news is, uh, a gospel is good news. You spread good news, it's always hard. Nobody wants to share something good. We're just walking all around the Bible today. When Jacob went and abdicated his throne to go and find, he made it hard for the Israelites to get back in a place. He put the Israelites in a state of homelessness. He was, a, he was walking towards Egypt thinking he was going to get his son. But him walking towards Egypt is not, and me walking towards Egypt and not let my son walk towards me means that none of my other sons have a place to live. We are God's people. He's not going to let us live in the wilderness. We are God's people. He's not going to let us live in Egypt. That means slavery. We are God's people. God gave us the promised land. But everybody knows when we get up and leave, whatever we leave is blessed. So they want it. People want your entrails. They want, they want, they want the stuff that they cut that's of the gum or in the bottom of your shoe. They want it. Because they know it's blessed. They don't realize that they can have the blessing too. But because you don't tell them how to get the blessing, you just beat them in the face with a sword. They walk away thirsty and they come back mad and then they try to beat you down. And the thing is, they know the size of your sword because you beat them with it. You showed your weapons. So when they come back, they come back ready for you. I don't have to hit you. I got words to make you doubt. Because when I came into you to get some help, you sent me out. Ten scouts, two scouts, ten plus two, twelve scouts. Twelve scouts went in, ten five, and two scouts came out. Watch the word, it says it. It doesn't say ten five, two scouts came out. What it says is, um, he says he sent the scouts in, Moses sent in twelve scouts. Then the word says, uh, when it came out, uh, he asked them, and the spies, ten spies said to him, the word calls them spies. What happened to make you switch? You were running away. Who ended you? They got in there saw giants. But what we know about the story is so funny to me. They went in and saw giants. We know that they had not put walls up yet. So everybody was walking in and out. We got the Jebusites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the uh, uh, Fibulites, the Giantites, the Ammonites, the, uh, the Amorites. They had everybody with eye. Now the Israelites is trying to come back. When they go into the promise, when they go into what was the promise land that Jacob advocated, what they find is everybody and giants. Your enemy never sees what you see when you look in the mirror. What they found was people were people and giants. What they came out and told them was people and giants. You cannot beat them. There are people and giants in there. If it's open and the city is open, they don't have gates, they don't have walls yet, right? Because they see you, now they're going to build the walls, right? But if the city is open, right? Everybody was inside that city. Parasite, Canaanite, Jebusites. Nobody was afraid of anybody inside of there. Nobody, nobody was related. Nobody was, was kin. You, you, me, my kin. No, nobody was afraid. Nobody, nobody had fear of anybody inside of them. It was a melted pot. But I know that the person standing next to me can't beat me. I will take him out. And they'll come in and out of the city freely. But when the Israelites walk in, whoa, they put up walls. When God's people come in, whoa, and they put up walls. I said, why is it easy for people to believe the Muslim faith that don't make no sense whatsoever? It, it doesn't. I have friends that are Muslim. I told them. And we talk about the Bible. We talk about, I talk about the Quran. They talk about the like Quran. We talk about their faith. I said, that's, that's, did you hear what you just said? It's not stupid in a bad way, but it's a stupid in a ridiculous way. It's stupid in the way that 
women follow it. I don't think women are the basis of, of, of religion in general. If you don't have women, you have nothing. Who give them birth? The women are the producers, right? But the, the Muslim faith is so disrespectful to women. Jesus was so respectful to women. And the Muslim faith is so disrespectful. And then, and then watch who you're talking about because Jesus was not disrespectful to the prostitutes. As a matter of fact, he talked about he, he was just as kind to them as he was even to his own mama. Because both the prostitute and his mama was at the cross. They both named Mary. One sold, her, one sold herself out, right? Mary was just sold out. Mary sold herself out. As a matter of fact, no, they both sold themselves out. Because Mary was trying to run Jesus' life and run his ministry by telling him, hey, make wine. For people that I just don't feel it was supposed to have wine. If you, go, if you go to the front, there's these evident pictures. For example, why was there only six pots? He went and told the man, put water in these pots. Why were there only six pots? These people are not supposed to have wine. That's just my contention, right? Because, because why was there only six pots for a wedding? If the six pots mattered, they would have been with the ones that were full. Somehow they, they went in and took out because she came to them and said, uh, they are the other woman. So somehow they went through what they had while these pots were sitting there. But Mary came to Jesus whining about wine when they needed living water. Mary sold herself out. Because she went to the man at the door. He said, woman, what's your concern have to do with me? This is not my time. Mary went to the door right there and said, do what he tells you to do. She was milking his ministry. He said it's not his time. But he was there. He was there to produce something. More often than not, when, when somebody asks Jesus for something, Jesus, if he does say no, like when he tells the woman, he said, it's not neat for me to take children's bread and cast it to the dogs. There's a whole bunch of spiritual, whole bunch of spiritual terms up in there, whole bunch. Basically called the woman a Gentile. A cast. It's a spiritual term. I'm not just casting this bread down to you, but I'm casting it down to something worse. Cast it down, right? He said, it's not neat for me to take the, it's not neat for me to take the children's bread and cast it down to the dogs, right? Or cast it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, true for her, but even the um, dogs eat crumbs from that fall from the master's table. He called Jens out, examined the cast again, it's not neat for me to take the, the, the cast it, right? He said no to her. Well, how did she handle it? That's why I said Mary sold herself out. How did, how did the woman, uh, what, 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 she had the, uh, the daughter had a vex with demons, right? It's a Syrophoenician woman. How did she end up? She answered to what he said, and then she answered him. She didn't go and talk to somebody else and tell them, make him do this. Lord, hear my daughter. It is not me for me to take the children's bread back to the dogs. Yes, Lord. Truth, Lord. She said she said truth, Lord. But even the dogs. 